Hello. In this video, let's talk about the event editor for the Brentum scheduler. First of all, what is the event editor? Well, this is the menu that shows whenever you double click on an event or when you select edit event from the event context menu. By default, the event editor has four fields, the name field, the resource field, and the start and end dates. As you might expect, this editor is completely customizable for the Brentum scheduler to fit your needs exactly. So what all can we do with it? Well, first of all, you could disable it entirely. That's done by setting the event edit feature to false. Now double clicking on an event does nothing at all. Likewise, the edit event item is removed from the context menu. Besides disabling it altogether, we can also customize what appears in the event editor. In the documentation, under the guides section, customization, and customize event editor, down inside of the customizing the child widgets section over here on the side, you can see all of the default widgets or default fields that make it into this menu. By targeting these different fields, you can customize how they work. Let's try removing the delete button that normally appears at the bottom of the menu. So now instead of passing a Boolean, I'll pass it an object. It will need to target the editor config property, then the B bar, which stands for bottom bar. Then we need to target which items should appear in the bottom bar. And lastly, we'll target the delete button and set its value to false in order to hide it. Awesome. In the event editor now, we only have these two buttons. We could also remove widgets or fields by setting their values to null. So I'll remove the code needed for hiding the delete button. Then we'll target items. And the two fields that I want to hide are start time field and end time field. Sure enough, start and end only have a single input now for the date. The time is gone. Sometimes, instead of removing a widget altogether, it really makes more sense to customize some of its properties. Well, you can do that by targeting the widget name and providing an object value with the properties that you want to override. Let's give that a try for the name field. We'll override the label and call it title now instead of name. Likewise, let's try moving the resource field higher in the event editor so that it appears at the very top. Perfect, resource is now at the top and the name field now is labeled as title. Depending on what kind of field the widget displays, you can view the various properties that you can customize within our API documentation. So here under API docs, core and widget, is a listing of all of the different field types. Some popular ones that might come in handy are the text field, the number field, and the date field. Instead of customizing an existing field, sometimes it makes sense to create a whole new field or widget that isn't provided by the scheduler out of the box. For instance, you might want to provide a way to add notes to each event. Well, we could do this much like customizing an existing field, just with a unique property name that ends with the suffix field. You'll always need to specify the type. We'll make this one a text area, give it a label of notes, and give it the name of note. Awesome. Now, it's very important that the data that you're using for the event scheduler actually has this note field within its properties. So each event needs to have a, a note property on it. We have dummy data coming from a data.json file, but you would need to ensure that this comes from your database or wherever your data source is. I'll just highlight the age property here, use it to command D and select all the different ages within my JSON data, and then I'll add the note field underneath defaulting the note to an empty string. Great, now the notes widget displays in the event editor. 
if you need to customize which widgets or fields display dynamically per event, then you can use the before event edit show listener. That's what I'm doing here, and I'm calling a function that we'll create now back in app component.ts. This gives you access to the editor instance where you can target and modify properties of a specific widget. And you also have access to the event record so that you can check the current event's data and then customize your widgets accordingly. Now I'll grab the note field from the editor's widget map and we'll set its hidden property based on whether or not the record's name is right click me. In the browser now, we do indeed have the notes field on the dad's birthday event. However, we do not have a notes field on the right click me event. To sum up, the event editor comes with great sensible defaults, but is also very simple to customize while still being flexible enough to fit your exact needs.